Hi folks, I wanted to talk to you about the idea of a polyatomic ion. Now you know what an ion is. An ion is an atom with a charge, but sometimes there exist groups of atoms that like to hang out together and all together they have a charge. So the idea of an ion isn't any different, it's just that instead of one atom having a charge, it's a group of atoms having a charge. So let me um, first of all just show you which are the really common polyatomic ions that you're going to need to know. Now there are gazillions of them, but in our class you just don't have to know that many. Alright, so here is our list here. Um, our list would be, for example, the following. NO3 with a minus charge is nitrate, A-T-E. Uh, OH with a minus charge is hydroxide. Okay, let's see. What are some other good ones? Oh, PO4 with actually three negative charges is phosphate. Okay. Um, let's see, what are some other good ones? Uh, oh gosh, oh how about this one? NH4 with a one positive charge is ammonium. And another good one is SO4 2 minus which is sulfate. Okay, now this is not a complete list, all right, but these are really common ones that you're going to see all the time, okay? And you will see other ones. There are other ones that are CLO for hypochlorite and, I mean, you know, permanganate. I mean, the list goes on and on, but again, for the most common ones, you're going to see 90 some odd percent of the time, it's these guys. And let me show you really quickly why this happens, okay? So I'm going to pick on nitrate here. As an example, this is the one I'm going to pick on here to show you why this occurs, all right? And so let me go to the next slide. So why is it that these little guys like to be hanging out together? And as we said before, when you make a molecule, you cannot end up with a charge. But in certain cases, these groups of molecules behave like single atoms and that they all hang out together with a charge and they move as a group. So let's look at this. Let's actually do the Lewis structure of this polyatomic ion based on the rules we did. Okay, so let's 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 add it up. So we have um, remember this is for Lewis structure for NO3 with a minus charge. Okay? Well, let's look at this. Nitrogen brings five valence electrons and oxygen brings six times three of them is 18, and then you've got this extra minus charge sitting up here. This little guy right here, okay, there's an extra one, so we have to take that into consideration. So the extra electron is one. So you've got to add them all together, 18 plus one plus five, Okay, that's 18 plus 6 is 24. So we have 24 electrons, all right? And so let's diagram this out. So I'm going to take, I'll change colors here. Let's go to blue, all right? So I'm going to put the nitrogen in the middle, the oxygens surrounding it. Why? Because oxygens are more electronegative and nitrogens less, so we put the less electronegative element in the middle. All right, sounds good so far. Same with our rules. One line one line, one line. I just used six electrons. So I'm gonna have to go over here, um, I change back to purple now for my math, and I go minus six. Now I'm down to 18 electrons. Go back to blue. All right, so now I have to place 18 electrons around the uh, atoms to satisfy the octets, and we work from the outside in. So here we go, one, two, in pairs, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's 12 so far. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's all 18. So if I do this now, I've just placed all 18 of my electrons, so I've used them all up. All right, now let's look at the octet rule. I'll switch to green for that. Um, oxygen here has got, on the left, on the right-hand side, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so it's good. The oxygen down below, 2, 4, 6, 8. 
Boom. It's good. The oxygen on the left, 2, 4, 6, 8. Boom. It's good. And the nitrogen, um, we're looking at, it's like, oh my gosh, check it out. It only has 2, 4, 6. So nitrogen is not good. So remember what we had to do in order to fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick any one of the three oxygens. It doesn't matter who it is. And we're going to take two of those electrons and we're going to kick them into a double bond. All right. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewrite this whole thing. Actually, on the next slide, I'm going to rewrite the whole thing. So when you do that, no, I better write it on this slide so you can see it. So let's go here and we'll write it in... Uh, Write it in black. Okay, when you do that, you get your nitrogen. And since I did it on the right-hand side, I now have a double bond to the oxygen. And I have two pairs around that one. The oxygen below stays the same. And the oxygen to the left. Do, 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 stays the same. So now we go and we do our final check, and we say, okay, and I look on the oxygen on the right with a double bond, 2, 4, 6, 8, okay, boom, he's good. The oxygen down below, 2, 4, 6, 8, good. The oxygen to the left, 2, 4, 6, 8, good. And then the nitrogen now has the four bonds around it, 2, 4, 6, 8, and the nitrogen's good. Everybody's good, okay? But the last thing you need to know is say, oh, okay, well, so you've done the Lewis structures before, that's fine, but where does this whole negative charge come from? Why do you end up with this negative charge sitting, oh, oh by the way, yes, I forgot, uh, in order to make this all official, okay, we have to give the whole thing a negative charge, because remember, there's an extra electron in there, this little extra guy came in, so it's a negative charge. Now, why did this happen? Okay, let's draw the Lewis structure without the negative charge. So remember, let's just do it with nitrogen, NO3, all right? If I just do that, nitrogen brings five, oxygen brings six times three is 18. You add it all up, you get this odd number. It's not an even number. And if you remember to our rules, we wanna place electrons in even numbers. One bond is two electrons. When you're placing electrons around the atoms, you do it in pairs. So I think right away you can see that 23 is going to be really weird to work with. Let's actually do it. Nitrogen. Okay. We do this. All right. So you start off the same. Minus 6, because I just used those three bonds. Okay, that's going to give you now 17. Now we're still in an odd number. So now I want to place my electrons. Watch what happens. 2, 4... 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. I've used up all my electrons. Oh my gosh, weirdness. There's this little guy here all alone without a pair. And right now this is a neutral molecule because the protons equal the electrons, there's no charge. But you cannot have this strange little unpaired electron. Chemistry doesn't allow for it. I mean, this would make this completely, totally reactive, and it is, and it's going to go and scavenge a partner for this little tiny electron because it's all alone, okay? You just can't make the bonds work with this little solo electron. So what you have to do is, from somewhere, it gets another electron, all right, to partner up with that one. But because you do that, you've added another electron to this whole thing, so I'm going to put it all in brackets. Because you do that, you have to give the whole thing a one negative charge because this little electron is extra, okay, to partner up with this other one. So again, we just added this little guy here is extra. In order to make the octet rule work, we had to bring in that extra electron, all right? And now we can see that, okay, let's, let's fix it, make it all official. Okay, I'll get rid of, you know, these two electrons here, and I'll kick them in to make that double bond. All right, and now we've got the happy octet on nitrogen and the four oxygen, or three oxygens, but it doesn't work if you have that little tiny unpaired electron over there. So for all of these polyatomic ions, you're going to find that that's what happens, is because of the way they're structured, um, they need to either get an additional electron or a couple of electrons to make things work in the octet world, um, and they follow the Lewis structure rules like we um, 
we have used to make the regular covalent compounds. It's just that at the end, you probably end up either with an extra electron or two, or you end up losing an electron or two in order to make everybody happy with the octet rule. All right, so this is the reason why, okay, these things hang out together like this and have a charge. And you need to treat this as one thing, okay? So you treat, oops, treat as one item or atom. So you don't break apart NO3 usually. It moves as a group. So NO3 with a negative charge is an ion, and it will go back, it will change partners, and it will, but the nitrogen with the three oxygens covalently bonded, okay, will all stay bonded together, and it will move as a group. Okay, uh, just like, an, like for example, a, an atom of chlorine with a negative charge, a chloride ion, will, you know, move and, and find a partner and, and do ionic chemistry, so will this, but instead of moving one atom, you're moving a group of four atoms together. So this thing moves as a group, and you treat it like you would treat one atom with a charge. It just happens to be four atoms covalently bonded with a charge.